on the nostalgia guy, remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about clock stoppers. Yeah, what, do you think it's gonna be a bigger introduction than that? You've been asking me to do this movie for years and years. What, do you think I was gonna be like, oh, this movie makes me so mad, I hate it so much. It's clock stoppers. It's like asking me to get angry at Wallace Shawn. I guess I could, but why? It's inconceivable. <laughs> The 2002 Nickelodeon film featured an idea that had been done plenty of times on TV, but never had an entire film focused on it. The idea of moving so fast that everything else around you seems to be still. Well, I admit, I was kind of interested when I saw it was directed by Will Riker himself, Jonathan Frakes, the director of easily the best Star Trek Next Gen movie. The film came and went pretty quick at the box office, but has gained a bit of a cult following over the years. Enough that people have been asking me for a long time to look it over. Don't get me wrong, there's certainly stuff to critique and make fun of, but I'm not gonna act like this is a get angry at the gods kind of movie. Uh, so speaking of which, Critic, are we needed for this? Yeah, I brought the chart guy suit if you needed it. Well, I did have a very expensive sketch idea where you two fly in on a giant eagle of not caring, spell out in flaming letters why you don't think you should be in any sketches, and I'm just gonna assume the next time I look up, you two will have taken the day off. Yeah, I don't blame you. By popular demand, here's Clock Stoppers. So seeing how this is the early 2000s, let's shove down your throat what producers thought was the hottest trend at the time, spy stuff. Yet for some reason, Hollywood thought spies were the biggest thing for a long time. Yet I never saw any kids or adults really going that apeshit about it. Unless Kim Possible's gonna say what's the sitch, I don't think this is as big a hook as you think it is. The film opens with the ultimate stamp of approval, French Stewart, trying to get on a plane dressed as every suspicious killer known to man. I need a vacation real bad. He demonstrates how a bill is turned into a law, but literally experiences pullback before he can buy the person's ticket. <laughs> Thought you could escape from Inspector Gadget too, huh? I think it's time you came back to work, Dr. Doppler. And again, seeing how this is the early 2000s, we also get to experience the 90s trying to die. In fact, there's so much of that in this film, let's just do a 90 slow death count. Number one, bands that are supposed to sound cool, but sound more like whiny valley kids with a cold instructed to clean their room. Come on, mom, you're so lame. We get a glimpse of our main character named Zach. He likes buying things from an antique store and selling them on eBay for double the price. Presumably so he can get this car he has his eye on. I'll give him points for showing all that visually without any dialogue, but deduct a point because it almost never comes into the goddamn story. Yeah, in the tapestry of the plot, this thread is literally the size of a thread! But his father, who's a teacher, is holding a car. That connects, right? At a point? And along comes Eddie in his Ferrari. Hmm? <laughs> hey, come on, that could happen. Totally. Okay, I already wish the movie was about him. But nope, it's about Zack and his father who's so involved with his science that he doesn't have time for his son. Yeah, that thing. You remember Earl Doppler, don't you? He's one of the best students ever to pass through here. That freak? Who used to come over and eat a lot of potato salad. <laughs> he isn't right? a freak, he's a little eccentric. You know, Egon, this reminds me of the time you tried to drill a hole in your head. Let's just say that, uh, hypothetically speaking, yeah. it were possible to accelerate your molecular structure until the rest of the world seemed as if it were standing still. Cool. Does it also have the power to mute the soundtrack? What happened there? Until the rest of the world seemed as if it were standing still. Alright, stop. Hammer time. He meets up with his friend named Meeker at paintball so they can partake in zany black friend antics. A biggie biggie! A biggie! A go Meeker! A go Meeker! Gonna get face! Biggity big 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 Yeah, let's be honest, that cliche is never gonna die. But Zach gets the hots for a Venezuelan girl named Francesca. She goes to our school? Mm -hmm. It's gotta be good for attendance. <clears throat> I'll just assume that was meant to be taken exactly how you're taking it. Excuse me, hi, do you have the time? Yes, yeah, not for you. So maybe you need somebody to show you around. I try to be brave exploring the town all by myself when all I really want is to be giving my love to the very first bozo who wants to know their time. I know you're turning me down, but after looking at the script, you are gonna do exactly what you just said you're gonna do, right? 
Zack then goes home to his economically struggling family, who get by on the low paychecks they save up. No, no, I'm just kidding, they're rich. You're so lucky you're an only child. Uh, I think the real time stopper is in her hairdo. Why don't we rework our counter there? No, this doesn't feel right. Let's get this back on track. Much better. Man. Oh, I'm teenage boying, Dad. It's my itinerary in the hotel in case you need to get in touch with me. Have fun with your science friends. Zach is still having trouble connecting with his father, which disturbs his mother, Julia Sweeney. We'll work it out when I get back. There's actually more truth to that than you know. The two of them don't address this connection again until the last 12 minutes of this movie. I guess the best way to identify not having him there is literally not having him there. But come on, we just figured out how to do Matrix effects so much we can put it in kids' films. When are we gonna be able to show that off? Well, it turns out Stuart is a scientist who's forced to use the time hacking device to figure out how to perfect it for an evil government baddie played by Michael Bean. The only man to die in cinema more than Sean Bean. In fact, even their last names kinda sound alike. Actually, why do we never see him in the same room? <gasps> Old man Bean! Uh oh! Give Stuart some credit as he's actually playing this role a little less goofy than he usually does as a tortured scientist who's turning older the more he uses the device. In fact, it's actually Bean, the serious actor, who's acting a little bit more goofy in these scenes. I sent him a watch. You idiot! Watch back. Good lord, you could use his teeth as a vegetable cutter! Those suckers are killer! I mean, I'm still waiting on some data from a friend. A friend? We can trust this guy. Don't make me perch my lips like I'm gonna blow a whistle again! But even bigger troubles are afoot, as Zack and Meeker go up against some bullies. They tripping on some bad lunch meat? Um, I said bullies. Can you two move out of the way so I can see where the bullies are? Hey, yo, 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 I ain't on him, all right? Oh, wait, they're the bullies? Um, <laughs> are you sure they aren't the practice bullies before they go up against the real ones? I'm quite positive you could very easily kick their asses. It's like fighting Stephen Baldwin from Biodome and that guy who ran Mondo Burger. This is not particularly threatening. There's nothing we can do. He's half our size and he had soda. The Geneva Convention is very clear about this. They next seem to be hitting on Francesca, who also appears to choose soda as her weapon of choice. Yeah. I got a hole for you. That's a perfectly good trash can. Don't be throwing students at it. Particularly weird line. What do you think she said after the Kennedy assassination? Hey, that was a nice car! Don't go putting holes in it! Kids! I didn't need any help. Yeah, I know. I was hoping you could help me. Could you protect me from those bullies? So Zach shows his thanks for helping him up by inviting himself over to her house where she says he can help her with gardening. Because she's clearly dressed for that. But earlier, Zack stumbles across his dad's inventions, mistaking it for junk, and takes away a watch that, you guessed it, makes him go super fast, making everything else seem slow. And echoey for no reason. Go! 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 Get out of here! I'll make you kick your ass. <laughs> Does over-the-top fake karate count? Okay. He thinks the animal's dead, but when he zaps out of hyper time, it's alive and well. Oh, boy, uh... <laughs> No, oh, yeah, miss, I don't need your help. When the threats are brewing, you sure know how to wave your wrists and go eee! You have the badass qualities of a housewife from a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Oh no, we got put in a John Woo movie. <laughs> Soon they discover they can both use the watch to move super fast and, again, to this movie's credit, they use it pretty much the way any kid would use it. Acting like little assholes. There's that woman who's always giving me parking tickets. Look at her. She writes them before the meter even expires. Let's put her in front of a moving car! Shall we? Make it so, number one. What? <laughs> You're a Star Trek in Venezuela. Do it. There's only so far your first contact cred can go, Xanatos. Of course, insanity ensues to the wrongdoers. Francesca's skirt almost gets us a PG-13, and they're off to see their friend Meeker take on the bullies at a record-scratching competition. Oh, 
would just throw 20 on there. I don't have time to count them all. But it turns out Mika really sucks at record scratching. So why would you enter a contest you know you'd be awful at? He really is not very smooth, is he? Yeah, that's a shame. Now DJ Beaker, that would be a jam. Zack has an idea though, as they start moving Mika around in hyper time to make it look like he's doing a bunch of crazy dance moves. Um, Tango Pringutas? The watch makes them move fast, not the invisible. If he moved at the speed they were showing, all people would see is a blur and his brain probably fall out of his ears. Second, does Mika just think he's possessed? He's smiling and having fun, but I'd be like, THE DEVIL IS IN ME! I AM THE BEGINNING OF HIS EVIL REIGN! Third, how are they even keeping him beat with the music if they're moving at different time lengths? They sure are keeping Step pretty good. Fourth, those pants. I know that doesn't connect as much, but you look like a midlife crisis on the lower half of Bill Murray. No, don't count that. I... I don't know what that is. Nickelodeon presents what we're pretty sure kids are into. Who we think? After a fun night of power and pleasure, Zack and Francesca seem to be getting closer. What? I wanted to kiss you. Well, yeah, we kind of put that together. Zack makes it home still in hyper time, only to find people have broken into his home, moving at the same speed. Okay, does that also mean they're moving in hyper time, or is this just inconsistency number 72 now? Oh, I hope Gizmo's okay. While you were showing off, I ran away! Idiot! He comes across Stuart, though, who tries to get the watch back while also trying to escape the bad guys. He gets away from the hospital he's put up in dress as a cop, but realizes he needs help. Eh, someone less annoying. That'll do. He goes back to Francesca's house, whose family's in the middle of filming an Olive Garden commercial. The Olive Garden Italian restaurant, where all the best of Italy is yours. I know this sounds weird and it's the last thing you want to hear from a guy after one date, but the cops are looking for me. <laughs> Again, there's some funny lines in this movie. This actually isn't that poorly written dialogue. You raked my leaves. I can't let you go alone. Most of the time, you say weird things. So like she said, she's not letting him go alone. She's with him all the way to the very- <laughs> But they're abducted by Stuart, who once again wants the watch back, but faces resistance. That's actually not- oh! Limber. All in favor of French Stuart never calling a girl Limber, thank you. They take him to the Hotel La Bleeding Eye Wallpaper, where they try to get some answers. This is really messed up. What? How do you think I feel? I think he's lying. Do you want me to kick him again? Yeah, alright. I don't like that look he gave her. I think you should stay very far away from that girl. Well, then I can just drop you off a QT. I'm sure Gates would love to have you back. Now, can you fix this? Why do we cut to a shot of her coming out of the bathroom? It's not a problem, I guess. Just odd. Actually, I think that's the description on the back of the box. So they go to an annual science convention to get materials to build liquid nitrogen guns to freeze anyone in hyper time. This convention is so popular, even directors make cameos at it. He's shaking his head saying, man, I wanted some Borg eye gouging in this movie. But it's a Nick film. You're starting to sound like your dad. Let's step back. Look at our office. Shut up. Nothing like him. Oh, come on. I meant it as a compliment, all right? I just want to remind you your connection with your dad is still a thing. You can sell that on eBay. Oh, and eBay, that's still a thing too. You still interested in that car? Whatever happened to Meeker? 
They gear up in their Ghostbusters slash Mario Sunshine gear and start freezing the other people in hyper time at the bad guy's headquarters. But they get caught and show that they've kidnapped Zack's dad to figure out how to use hyper time without aging. But when government agents led by the asshole doctor from Scrubs want the information the villains have... You can't come in. What has two thumbs, a funny voice, and still doesn't give a crap? Bob Kelso! They get in their intimidating black cars and rush the building. However, the bad guys decide to put the whole building in hyper time and kill our heroes. So Zack figures out how to do hyper time in hyper time. Or as Fry calls it, the 100th cup of coffee. The molecules are moving so fast your hand went right through the table. Are you okay? I have no idea. So, how are we able to speak to you? Are you just saying things very slowly and being unbelievably patient with us? Oh, wait, wait, I've seen this. Demi Moore says ditto, and then he goes into the Close Encounter ship. It's a tearjerker every time. I guess fittingly, the hyper hyper time goes pretty quick, and he isn't in it for very long. But just long enough to pull the lever to set them free. But Bean gets the drop on them. Hey! Good night, little man. God, he said that like a third grade bully. So... The big bullies are just non-threats and the actual threat is just a big bully? I feel like all the villains are just a few steps behind in this movie. But Stuart comes in to save the day and everybody is finally reunited with their families. Oh, thank God you're okay. I had a role in this movie. It had lines and everything. The father even made an anti-aging device to get French Stuart back to his actual young age. Oh, hey, Mrs. G. How's it hanging? Doppler? Okay, I somehow doubt French Stewart looked like that as a kid. He can actually open his eyes. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Soon the world will know our wrath. Mercy is for the dead! So that was Clock Stoppers, and... It's really not that bad. The biggest flaw is probably its main characters, who were written a little too generic. And once in a while there's a science detail that even in a kid's film is a little distracting. But the adult actors are a lot of fun, the idea is still creative, it has some inventive shots, and even the effects for the most part hold up pretty well. It's definitely a corny time capsule in both plot and identity, but as kids action flicks go, it's okay. While there's a lot to make fun of, there's also a lot of fun to make too. So yeah, I know this isn't really as angry as you'd expect. Um... But Nickelodeon still made The Last Airbender! Ooh, never forget, never forget, ooh! I'm the Nostalgia Critic and this was an angry review, ooh! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing the American Liver Foundation. Their mission is to facilitate, advocate, and promote education, support, and research for the prevention, treatment, and cure of liver disease. These values guide their work as volunteers and staff members move forward towards their goal of a world without this disease. Research is integral to their work and is essential to improving treatment and finding cures. Many forms of liver disease are preventable and many more can be cured if detected early, yet tens of thousands of Americans don't even know that they're living with it. They take a leadership role in advocating on behalf of the millions of Americans living with the illness as well as their families. If you go to their site or their YouTube page, you can see how they're making a difference and how you can contribute to that difference. Take a look and check them out. <laughs>